We're all familiar with the classic four colored ballpoint pen. We have blue ink, green ink, black ink, and of course red ink, all conveniently in the same pen and easily changeable. But what if, what if, <laughs> If I told you there was a ballpoint pen with 10 different colors, that's right. This thick boy has 10 different ink pens inside of it. Let's just review the colors here. We have black, yellow, light blue, orange, brown, red. Is that seafoam green? We have a darker blue, a mid color blue. Is that purple or pink? I don't know, but there are 10 colors in this pen and today I thought it would be really fun to create art with just this pen, experiment with style, experiment with these colors and see what we can come up with. So I've sketched some ideas for each of the colors, nothing super exciting yet. We are just kind of brainstorming ideas for now. But as I was sketching, I did think of a really cool idea to mix up these illustrations. Like I mentioned, I thought it would be fun to maybe do an illustration for two colors each. So that being said, I actually thought to keep it random, I would just go ahead and combine the colors that are across from each other right here maybe sort of incorporate the colors into the ideas. So now I thought it would be really fun to maybe add a little flare of each of the colors. So I'm gonna sit here and try to put some of the red into this illustration. I've kind of already colored a lot of black into this one, so I'm not sure how much is really going to show up. I can give the little ghost some red cheeks. Maybe do my fun blood splatters. That's right, you thought we were gonna go without blood. I don't think so. And maybe this guy, let's see. You know what, maybe he's squirting out ink. He, he's got a cold, he sneezed, and uh, now there is ink uh, just flying out of his little mouth hole thing. Moving on to our green detail on this guy, obviously, I think making his leaf green would be fun. And in fact, adding green to this yellow kind of makes this sort of sap green color, which is really fun. I think in general for this guy, I would probably just have, oh, let's have one come out of his butt. <laughs> okay, what can we add to this one? This one was definitely a struggle because the green pen was just so in and out and I was having a huge struggle Moving on to our little whale buddy right away. I'm already thinking adding some fish in here to accompany him. Probably redefine some areas that could be a little bit darker. I really like the way this is looking so far. The, the light blue isn't super bright, it is colorful, but having this very vivid purple in there really adds to this one. So I think this is the first one that I'm really enjoying. I mean, aside from the blood splatters, because I mean, I can't resist blood splatters. Which brings us to this one. Uh, this one is probably the worst sketch out of all of them. I really just, I don't know. I mean, it's definitely making it more colorful and more fun, but I, I really like the way that the whale turned out, so I'm definitely going with that one between these two. All right, moving on to our lion cut cat, which honestly, I really enjoyed playing around with the texture of the pen on this one and just scribbling and just really enjoying that aspect. This is definitely gonna be one of those illustrations where I need to think about how I include both of the colors, but I think that's gonna be about what I do. I'm really not sure what I can add to this one. Maybe I can give our characters. And for our last set of illustrations, I actually really like both of these illustrations. I think I'm more partial to our girl at the bottom right's features. She's just really exaggerated and really fun. I kind of like the sideways look of her, but I'll go ahead and add some pink details. Maybe I'll fall in love with him, who knows? 
It's kind of crazy how just adding a second color to these illustrations really adds a lot of character and pop and extra color to them. Something I really like about working with the ballpoint pen, and it's definitely not something that I ever work with, is just the scratchiness and the texture of the lines. Usually with my art, I like to work really clean and solid, but when you work with a new medium or a medium that you don't normally work with, it's really fun to embrace those details, like all of the scratchy lines that you get and just seeing how you can incorporate that into your usual style. Or actually, hold on, I should make her her skin light brown. Okay, I've decided to go ahead with only three of these sketches because not all of them are the most successful, but one of them will be drawn with all 10 colors of the pen. So let's get to drawing. I think it's really appropriate that the first illustration I'm doing with the ballpoint pens is with the black and the red ink because normally when I think ballpoint pen, I think of a basic black pen. And to be honest, red is another pretty basic color for a ballpoint pen. So it was really interesting to jump into this first illustration with some really basic colors. But I think also come out with a really fun and a playful illustration with a medium I never use. I know ballpoint pens are actually really common for artists to use. In fact, there's an artist here on YouTube, his name is Kesh, and he does a lot of ballpoint pen illustrations. I think ballpoint pens are really interesting when it comes to art because they are so cheap and available to everybody. You can go to the dollar store, your local store, a grocery store, corner store, gas station, everybody sells ballpoint pens, and I think the quality between them is pretty basic. I've never heard of a very fancy ballpoint pen brand out there. I'm sure there's a lot of maybe office workers that have ballpoint pens when you get to the top and you're you're the boss and you have a fancy ballpoint pen. But I think overall ballpoint pens are just one of those universal cheap art supplies that you can just pick up and start using. That being said, I'm not used to them and it was really interesting to use and get used to, especially with my art style. I do like to work in bold, flat colors and shapes and because the ballpoint pen is so thick, in. Working with it was a lot different than what I'm used to. I did really want to embrace this material. I use a lot of textures. When you flick the pen, you get this really nice gradiented color. So it's really fun to use this to create shines, reflections in the water. I was also very mindful in the direction of the strokes I was making. So when it came to the ink coming out of the octopus, I made sure all of my strokes were going in the same direction to sort of add to the flow or texture that the ink has in the actual illustration. So for the sky, I did a bunch of small little circles to try to create a more flat, but also a little bit busy looking flat surface, if that makes sense. Speaking of sky, filling in large areas like that were very tiring on my hand and took a very, very long time. But I do think it was worth it because the flat area looks so satisfying. I really like the red and the black together, creating this sort of darker illustration with the night sky because the red was so dark. Really brought the whole mood together. We have this really interesting scene at night in the ocean. I decided, if you can't tell, to combine my two ideas with the ghost and the octopus squirting out ink. I think there's a lot of versatility here and it was a really nice warm up. I had a lot of fun with this one. And the result, it's kind of cute. So for our second ballpoint illustration, I really fell in love with the combination of that bright blue and that really vivid neon purple color. I don't know if it's maybe also a combination of the subject of the sketch I made, but I just thought those colors went so well together and they just really helped create this really nice mood and brightness and I wanted to play more on that. So I did end up changing the sketch a little bit on this one because obviously all of my sketches were in portrait and I was now going to be working in landscape. I don't know why I did that, kind of silly. 
So going into this illustration, I actually wanted to try out a lineless style. In the previous illustration, I worked with a lot of shapes that were filled in, but for this illustration, I wanted to create these whale figures in the sky, but I didn't want to give them line art. I wanted to create the shape of them by creating lines around them. So obviously this is going to be a little bit tricky and a little bit messy because I was depending on my accuracy to create these shapes without a border, without a nice clean line around them. But I think in the end, they turned out pretty well. It was again, quite time consuming because the pen, uh, ballpoint pens again, are very fine. So they take a lot of lines to fill in a larger space. But because they are so fine, they do create a really nice way to make gradients and a nice thin lined transition between two colors. So I started off with a solid block of the light blue and eventually petered that out into the white page. And then I went through and added purple on top and it just looks so good. I don't know what it is about this really bright purple that I somehow like, but putting it on top of the blue worked so well. And I was just really happy with how the gradient turned out. The creatures themselves are kind of silly and kind of random. I think the main part about this illustration that I really like is just the gradient in the background. It just looks so nice. I just really like the way it turned out. And especially, this is absolutely silly. But when I look at this illustration, nothing makes me more happy than the shadow of the fin of the larger whale. I put a lot of purple on it and it looks like it's fading off into the background. It's just this perfect shaded object in the background and it just looks so well the way it blends in with the purple and the blue. A shaded whale fin. It, it brings me so much joy. What can I say? And of course, this illustration wouldn't be complete without my birds or fish. We have some flying fish in the background. I think those are a really cute addition. The silhouettes of flying fish. It really brings it all together. So there it is, our sky whales. For our third and final ballpoint pen illustration, this is the one where I wanted to combine all 10 colors to create one piece together. And I was really intimidated. I really enjoy working with a limited color palette. So when it comes to combining a lot of colors, especially when they are so different from each other, I get a little intimidated and a little scared on where to put all these colors in the same illustration while also having them work together as one. But I think in the end, I came up with something really fun. So this illustration actually went through a lot of different stages. I kept changing it as I went. Originally going into this piece, it was just going to be a girl looking at a ghost. But as I worked with the texture of the pen, I eventually gave up on trying to make it something that I wanted it to be and eventually realized that I was going to have to embrace the texture of this pen and incorporate these textures in a way that really benefit the illustration instead of trying to hide them and and make them something they aren't. With the first two illustrations, because the color palette was limited, it was really easy to focus on creating blocks of color that separated each other. But going into this illustration where there was 10 colors, I felt like using gradients and combining these colors in a way that made them work together was going to be the key. Sure, I could have used blocks of color, don't get me wrong, that was totally an option, but I felt like using this ballpoint pen in a way that was ballpoint penny. So at first I was approaching her skin tone in a way that could be built upon and darker in some areas and lighter in others. But this also meant that there was going to be a lot of the pen texture that you could see. So at first I tried to make the strokes all in one direction, but then my inconsistency of making a straight line didn't look good. So I decided to make a lot of crisscrosses and I really like the way the texture kind of looked like a burlap sack, I guess. So I started to embrace the textures a lot more as I went to this illustration and I was just going to use the texture and cross hatching as the style of this drawing. But then eventually as I tried to add blush on her cheeks, 
I realized it just looked like she had a scratch on her face. So then I thought it would be really fun to make her look a little beat up. Maybe she had actually just died. And her little ghost friends here are there to guide her to the other side as she realizes that she is dead. So I had a lot of fun layering in colors that I wouldn't normally layer in. I was putting a lot of green and red into her skin and I think it created this kind of dark, creepy, but also really fun and playful style of illustration. Working with a ballpoint pen was really different than how I normally work, but I had a lot of fun figuring out this medium. And overall, I had a lot of fun with it. So that is it for our giant tin color pen. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Stay golden. But before I go, I wanna give a huge thank you to my patrons for all of their support. You guys are seriously amazing. If you want early access to my videos, secret sketches and more, check out the Patreon link in the description. Thank you guys all so, so much for the support. Bye.